Good morning, folks. We've got continued space weather, a major earthquake drought, news from Juno, and a rundown and outlook on weather. We begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're looking at the last 24 hours on our star. Small CME was released top left. That was the flash and pop, but it's not coming our way. Otherwise, we see the end of the current coronal hole system. Coming to the X-ray flux, we see no solar flares. Magnetogram shows us the spot we eyed before and an energetic region at the limb. And since the earth facing quiet has all but erased that first grouping, our eyes will be firmly set down there. When we invert color on 171 angstroms, the arching dark blue fields from the spots come into view. It's the equatorial group on the side we're eyeing and also looking for another turning in on the north, maybe another day away. Solar wind continues to be intensified by the coronal hole but it can't even break 600 kilometers per second, so it's a modest stream at best, creating only instability in Earth's shield, despite enduring for about 48 hours already. Geomagnetic storms are unlikely without further intensification, and we may actually see an equilibrium reach despite a lasting stream. But those further intensifications are still possible because these coronal holes spew solar wind as well, and we'll wait to see how strong those will be. Also tough to imagine another equatorial IMF situation not making big quakes. Got one coming up in about a day or two. We've gone more than 25 days, way, way below average quaking. Top stories take us out to Jupiter, where the final orbital maneuver of Juno has been canceled. Instead of a 14-day orbit, it will stay in the 53-day orbit, which actually still has a close approach that is about the same as the shorter orbit. It just goes out much further on its departure. They do expect no science degradation and plan to release a lot more images soon. Newest U.S. temperature outlook has arrived. We've got March, April, and May, and it's setting up like a relatively normal spring in their eyes. Kind of scary tornado outlook, actually, though. Also scary is if this was happening above you. Contractor in China is going to hear it over that one. But speaking of high winds, we're seeing those, major rainfall, and the effects beginning to pile up in California. All the water drove sinkholes, flash flooding, and the death tolls are creeping upwards already. We're going to run through the GOES visual, vapor, and infrared views of just what happened there. Looks like what Seattle is used to seeing, but they can handle all that rain up there. This is brutal, and here we go again as this storm moves into the desert. We'll see another system encroaching Northern California this evening. There have also been major reports of storm effects in Australia and New Zealand. Frankly, any storm near Oceania right now appears to have significant potential to outdo local forecasts. Be vigilant. For more on the biggest topic of future climate change discourse, grab Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, available almost anywhere, and don't forget about the Disaster Prediction app, Earthquake Alert Maps, Space Weather Alerts, and the Observer's Critical Alert System. We've got pressure and radar forecasts for Europe and for some other areas in the Southern Hemisphere, a bit of null school, and shots of our star to close. Today's episode of Fly on the Wall for website members comes in just a few hours. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.